Well, hello, my lovely nestlings, and welcome to another new series on my channel. Today is all about the seasonal celebrations, the pagan holidays, seasonal magic, and makeup. And this is the very, very first feast we are going to talk about, Imolk. And if you're new, welcome. My name is Nikki. I am from the Netherlands, hence the accent. I'm also slightly orcish, relatively vintage. I love spooky stuff, makeup, and being creative. Let me explain some things. The slightly orcish means I'm green. I'm a light to light medium warm-ish. Olive, the relatively vintage means I'm 46. Am I still 46? Yeah, I'm still 46. It's almost my birthday, so I have to think about it sometimes. You know you're old when you have to think about it. Your age, right? Never mind. Anyway, uh, as I said, today is the first installment of my seasonal magic and makeup. And I'm going to celebrate the pagan ways. If you don't know, I am a pagan myself. I uh, follow mostly the Germanic pantheon. But I do celebrate the year wheels and the full moon. I also have a, a series about the full moon on my channel. The first episode is online and I will link the playlist in the description box for you to check out. What does this entail? We have four uh, holidays or celebrations that are very Celtic in origin. And then we also have four that are more on the cardinal points. So the summer solstice, the spring equinox, the fall equinox and the winter solstice. And I'm going to do a series about that. So today, as I said, is Imolk. It's the very very first one and I'm so so excited so what am I going to do I'm going to create this makeup look and I'm going to talk about what today's celebration stands for not only that but it's also again a collaboration with my dear friend Katie from Makeup for Lost Time she also collaborates with me on the Moon Magic and Makeup series so definitely go check out her channel I cannot wait to see what she does she's in America I'm here in Europe and she has a different way of celebrating these types of holidays so you will get two separate views and definitely go check out Katie she is an amazing creator I I, I kind of do have to explain that she also curses a lot in her videos not that I mind but I know that some of you do so if you don't like someone who curses a lot and Katie is not for you however she's very talented she's very creative she's such a good human definitely go check her out anyway and see if you can kind of vibe with her so katie thank you so so much for collaborating with me again on this uh, series and i cannot wait to hear your story and to see what you create so let's just stop rambling for me let me get my notes and then i can tell you all about the whole day while you are watching me create this makeup look which is inspired by imolk the colors of today are white green silver and pastel and that is what i kind of wanted to incorporate so now we at least know a little bit of the backstory of the makeup look let's get into the information mm. many pagans witches and those interested in nature spirituality celebrate the seasonal cycles sometimes referred to as the wheel of the year and consist of eight celebrations four of these celebrations Imolk, Beltane, Lunasa and so on are rooted in Celtic history and origin. The four others, uh, which are the spring equinox, summer solstice, autumn equinox and winter solstice represent the sun's location. Today, the first one is a holiday and it is Imolk. Imolk or Imbolc is a pre-Christian Celtic festival and is celebrated around February 1st in the Western Hemisphere. Usually the celebrations start after sundown and end after sundown the next day. It's the halfway point between the winter solstice and the spring equinox. It's literally midwinter. And while the days continue to grow lighter, it is still dark and cold outside. However, the earth is awakening and you can see the first flowers emerge. We call these flowers snow bells. I don't know what you guys call them in uh, America and in England and all around the world. Let me know how you call the flower that you saw on the screen. According to the Sanas Cormac, which is an Irish glossary containing explanations of a lot of Irish words, the word imolk was translated to oi milk, if I pronounced it correctly, which means sheep milk it refers to the lactation of sheep and the birthing of the first lambs which happens in this period the word imolk can also be linked to the celtic verb volcame which means to wash or to clean the th a third translation which is probably the oldest can be found in an old in the old irish language 
it breaks the word imbolc down. Im means round and bulk means belly or womb. So it basically means around the belly or around the womb. The earth, meadows, fields are the wombs of Mother Earth and the Earth Goddess. During Imolk, the fields were ritually cleansed and they would dance and jump around the fields before they were plowed. This was done to wake up the earth and make the soil fertile again after the sleep of winter. The festival of Imolk is the first plow and plant slash sow feast. If back in the day or now you lived in a cold climate, you could see the very first sign of springs and it would show you that winter was conquered. You were still alive and it was time to rejoice. Imolk is strongly associated with the Celtic goddess Bridget. She is the daughter of the Celtic god Dagda, who was the fey leader of the Tuatha Dé Danann. She is a solar deity associated with the beginning of spring and is one of the most popular Celtic goddesses. Her name means the High One or the Exalted One. She was born at sunrise with rays of sunlight radiating from her head. She is known for many things, but is often referred to as the goddess of illumination, fire, renewal and creativity. Crosses and corn dollies or dolls were often placed within the kitchen to encourage Bridget's help defending the home from fire. Food would be placed outside the home as an offering to her on the eve of Imolk to ensure abundance in the coming year. The following day, Bridget was honored with glowing lanterns and by lighting fires. There are a lot of celebrations, holidays and feasts associated with Bridget. Candlemas is one, St. Bridget's Day is another, and there are more. Even Valentine's Day can be kind of traced back to this time of year. So what does that mean for you and how can you celebrate it today? The spiritual meaning of Imolk is transformation, purification, fresh beginnings and celebrating the return of the light. After months of self-reflection, planning and goal setting, your ambitions are beginning to stir. Goals and dreams that you have created in the dark, cold nights are now being lit by the fires of midwinter. Let your creativity and imagination help manifest these dreams. It is time for new goals and fresh intentions. So what are some of the spiritual intentions of this feast? Creativity, awakenings, introspection, Inward focus, fresh beginnings, perseverance, patience, renewal, pureness, personal development, shifting, revision, healing, frugality, self-care, and youth. There are also a number of foods and drinks associated with each pagan holiday actually and today I will give you a few that correspond with Imolk. Most important is to look what is basically in season for you right now where you live in the local area. Among other things right now is for root vegetables, dried fruits, stews, meat which is a honey wine fermented foods, grains, dairy, cider, herbal tea, canned foods, oats, and pancakes. I kind of touched on the colors a little bit, but the colors of this season um, have specific meaning. So the colors white and silver symbolize purity and the final days of the winter season. The color green and pastel colors represents the coming of spring and the lovely flowers to come. So you have light green, soft pinks, pale yellows, whites, golds, silver and pastels. There are also a number of plants associated with this holiday. Ah, here it is, the snowdrop, which was the plant that I referred to a little bit earlier, which we call the snow bell. Uh, it's one of the first flowers to blossom and basically signifies for me, at least where I live, that the colder days are 
less frequent than the period before. Uh, another one is cinnamon. Then we have cedar, rowan, angelica, sycamore, bay laurel, chamomile, dandelion, and blackberry. There are also a number of symbols associated with today's feast. So the candle flame. Uh, a candle or light because of the association with Bridget. Seeds, a besom or broom. Bridget's cross, a serpent, sheep, white flowers, snowflakes, flowing water and springs, which represent purification. The sun wheel, due to the strengthening of the sun's powers, star and evergreen. The animals associated with today are the deer, the cow, sheep, lark, swan, bear, wolves, groundhog, and all other burrowing and hibernating animals. A few ritual ideas that you can do today. Set intentions. You can do this through manifestations, meditations, or just writing them down in your spiritual journal or grimoire. You can create your own Bridget's cross and I will link a tutorial for that down below in the description box. They are very, very cool to make and you can use, if you're keeping a diary or a grimoire or a journal, uh, what you could do is uh, list any crystals, scents, foods or herbs that you enjoy using this time of year. The next full moon, which is going to be in the weekend, the 5th, is called the snow moon. And you know, you can research that and write that down as well. There will be a video on snow moon though, don't worry. You can press flowers or herbs or leaves. You can question, you can ask yourself what you want to plant this year. What kind of seeds do you want to plant, both physically and metaphorically? You can decorate your home and altar in the colors of the festival and also use some figurines for this time of year. And if you want to, some plants that also correspond with this time of year. You can burn candles and light a fire to represent the strength of the sun returning. Another thing is go for a walk in nature and pay attention to what you see and hear. Can you see the new growth already? Can you feel that the sun is getting stronger? Can you hear and see the wildlife coming out of hibernation? The birds who are gathering food, who are building nests? Listen and feel and see what is happening around you. Now can be also a great time to start some seeds for your garden. I kind of touched on that a little bit, but what you can do if you want to start your garden uh, is use a small bay leaf or small piece of paper. Write your wishes, goals, intentions on that and bury them beneath the seeds that you are planting. Remember to practice gratitude and act if the intention has already happened. Be positive and creative. As your seeds sprout, they will carry your hopes and intentions to fruition. Remember to focus on your intentions every time you water them. I think those are just some very easy ways that you can incorporate this festival in your daily life. If you have a specific way of celebrating Imolk or any of the other celebrations during the year, let me know down below in the comment section because I'm very interested to hear how you guys celebrate this. I will link the website that I used for today's video. There is tons of information there. Definitely go check out or, you know, search yourself for Imolk, how you can celebrate that, what it means for you and how you can incorporate that in your daily life. I can talk about this for hours, but we don't have hours. I will also link uh, the book that I used for today's video as well. And let me know down below how you celebrate Imolk. Or maybe this is your the first time that you're hearing about it. Let me know down below also. Don't forget to check out Katie's video. Her channel is linked down below in the description box. And Katie, thank you so, so much for collaborating with me again. I'm just having such a blast planning these out, writing stuff down, finding all the pictures that I want to use and making everyone aware that this is a thing. Um, it has been in my life. I've been celebrating these holidays for years and I want to share them with you as well. So thank you so, so much for watching. I cannot wait to film the next one, which will be in a few months, which will be the um, spring equinox. That will be the next one. Uh, it's one of my favorite holidays. So 
Let me know if you celebrate that as well. The 5th of February, a new video will go online about the next full moon. So definitely, if you're interested in that, hit the subscribe button and the bell button so you'll be notified when it goes online. Uh, thank you so very, very much for watching. I want to end today's video with a poem and I hope that you like it as much as I do. It is called Awakening. I don't know the author, but it is called Awakening. And it goes like this. Oh, where are you going? And what is your name? My name child is Bridget and I carry a flame to melt the old winter and kindle the spring to whisper her birth name and teach her to sing. Oh, where are you going? Please tell who you are. My name child is Mary and I carry a star to lighten the hearts of the folk of the earth to sing their true nature and dance them to birth. Please tell me, flame bearer, which way will you run? By the highways, my child, in the path of the sun, where the flowers leap to life as I travel along and the cold earth awakes in the warmth of my song. And tell me, star mother, how far must you go? To a land in my dreams, child, where the sun melts the snow, where a blade of pure innocence pierces the night and the children of earth take their place in the light. Please bless me, flame keeper. Stay with me, star maid. Deliver my journey from shadow and shade and stir up my soul with a sunlit desire to hallow this world with a new rising fire. Have a very, very blessed Imolk. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.